That's the name of the company? That's the name of the company. Okay. And so, what are you... What well, you tell like me, I understand that tonight we're getting some new information about these new studies, noise studies that happen. Okay. Is that true? Yes. That we didn't have this information so this last is, time. So, so this is a sound contour plot. What we've developed here is a prediction based on the... Uh, the, the current sound, the current turbine layout, and what we're showing here are contours at in five decibel increments, starting at 50 decibels, going to 45, and, and down to 40 decibels. Meaning that's the sound. That's the sound level attributable to the to the operating project. Okay. So that's kind of the the the, the predicted levels from the project, how the project or it kind of shows how sound level decreases with distance or attenuates with, with distance. Uh, and we're also showing kind of the structures that have been identified in and around the, the vicinity of the okay. And so I know that I've, I've heard about these things before. What do those numbers mean to me? And what does 40 decibels, what does 45 decibels mean? Is that like... Well, uh, so I, I think, you know, we've got a sound level meter over here. Kind of see what... When we're talking close to it, we're at 70, right? That way that's measuring our voice right now. Yeah, that's kind okay. of measuring what's going on in the space. Yeah. A normal conversation at three feet is generally in 65. That's got okay. range. So. Okay. And so it appears that some of those homes in Wyndham are getting 40 decibels. Yeah, that what I'm looking at. Yeah, we would predict somewhere on the order of, of between 45 and 40 for some of those. And can you explain a little bit how that's done? I mean, obviously the turbines aren't up now, so how do you sure. do something like that? So we use a uh, model to develop it, and what we're using is uh, the vendor's sound level information that's provided for the turbines. And that's provided for, in accordance with an IEC technical specification or standard. So there's a standard way that the vendors uh, conduct testing uh, of, of, uh, of, a, of a turbine that will then use the model for propagation, outdoor propagation. That's what we include into the model. Uh, we take the geographic information in terms of the turbine locations. Uh, we assign them the sound power level based on... So none of this was done physically, like like going out to the ridge, sending out sounds that you go to the turbine? It's not no, that no, we, we, that's not how these studies... It's okay. not how these preliminary studies are done. Are, 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 okay. yeah, well, what these are done, again, is, is, is based on the, uh, the vendors sound level specification and then a modeling thereof of it. And so I asked the guys with the um, with the photos as far as a study like this, is this as detailed as will be available with the sound or can you do kind of deeper studies? Let's say this this goes through and they want to learn more about it. Because the visual simulation, you know, they said that's only twenty photos and you can do a lot more you know, you can take 80 or 100, but I can imagine with sound. I mean, this is kind of a contour map, and we can maybe do contours for lower wind speeds, but this is generally kind of what we end up with. Like generally what, what, we, what we end up with focusing on. Excellent. All right, thank you. Yeah, you bet. No? Yes?
I'm, I'm the worst half for this crew. Hey, go for it. You know, I do. I'm not the same as saying anything. Myself. I've been at meetings you were at, but I've not actually met you. My name is Mike Fair. I work at, uh, I used to work for the Reformer, and I work for the Monte Okay. Good. I assume your story. Yeah. At some point, maybe I'd want to check in with you. How long do you plan to be around? The whole thing? Or? Okay. <laughs> Talk to you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I will give you one comment. Count the lawyers, count the lobbyists. Yeah. Alex McLean, Andy Rambogel, yeah. Todd Bailey, Jeff Hand. This is quite the. You know, Andy and Jeff are basically the 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 front of all wind projects in Vermont now, except David Butterstorf. They're the lawyers you see at the Public Service Board for Deerfield Wind, for um, Sheffield Wind, for GMP's stormwater stuff, and for Georgia Mountain Wind. They, they are Andy over there, the bald guy, and Jeff over there. They are the face of the wind industry in Vermont now. That's who the neighbors get to deal with when there are problems. Not knowing all the players by sight. Well, there you go. There's Jeff. And then their noise expert, 
which is the reason I'm here, is Mark Batak. He is the noise expert for Iberdrola's Hard Scrabble Wind Project, which is being sued by 60 people in a neighboring town over in New York State. I'm really quite surprised they brought him in here. Also surprised they brought Alex McLean, you know, she used to work for the governor. So they're really putting some money into this. We got Jeff Nelson, he testified this morning about the Lowell Storm Water Permits in the Fish, Wildlife and Water Resources Committee because there are conditions that have not been satisfied. I'm just trying to familiarize myself yeah. and look at a phone or a camera. There's the. Oh, yeah, we key. got that all figured out. Yeah. It must be Ruger's. It must be the camp on uh, Stiles Road you've been up there. Probably, yeah. Where's yours? In the five ponds. Hey, what's up? I got, I got right one there. of those things. You know, I was taking note of how many residents are in this 40 decibel ring here. You know, in the. This map is extremely, uh, shall we say, conservative compared to what we've seen at other projects in Vermont. Minimizing the impacts. Minimizing. Yeah. Oh yeah, seriously. I mean, look, these are. This is within half a mile. We got to figure the, the winds too are going to. Prevailing winds probably. Depends on where you are. But I can scream louder than that. It's not about that. But ask him, he's the expert. Cool. Well, it's great. You try to stay. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure, you're right. Well, you can hear the skitters quite a ways away. I don't know, am I? I don't know. I can see Steve don't have to take the lines back in the day. I haven't pulled anything, but I haven't checked anything. Oh, yeah. I'm still at 1 7. Yeah, I'm not going to.
is it related to the festival? So I, I think distance is one surrogate you can kind of use, but I also think if you've got a project layout, you're better off trying to take the layout and do an analysis of what's actually looking good. If you just if you just use distance, you can you can be over you can be overly conservative or you can be under conservative depending on the number of factors, you know, number of turbines, how they're oriented, what your position is in relation to them, all kind of come into play. So that's where I think uh, you're in a better position, or you have more information when you kind of go forward with some model. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Hi, excuse me. I have a couple questions. Sure. If I could. You're showing where the sound drops off. This is 40. Yeah, that's what, before. What happens beyond that? Well, well, as you get further away, the sound will attenuate. Right. So you'll be less than 40. I understand. Yeah. But where are those? Well, we would tend where are to those focus. brackets? We would tend to estimate that, you know, you're kind of seeing, if we were going to be looking out this way, you can kind of see that this is a 5 decibel increase. And then the next 5 decibel increase is going to be a little bit larger because the way the acoustics work. And similarly, the next five decibel will be a little bit larger than that, and then it's going to grow a little bit larger than that. So, and of course, that depends on when the wind is blowing and how it's blowing. That's right. So what we're doing here is we're kind of looking at this in terms of an omnidirectional scenario, which, meaning, is, which means that the wind, meaning that we're predicting it, we're using downwind predictions over here, and we're using downwind predictions over here simultaneously. Even though that realistically the winds Wouldn't will either happen. be that way or that way, so we're we're kind of projecting and, and this. Quote so is downwind. this the best case scenario or the worst case scenario? So this is assuming all of the turbines are operating at their maximum rated sound, so it's kind of a more conservative scenario. So this is looking at them all operating at their, uh, the, you know, the vendors give data for various wind speed bins, and so we're using the loudest piece of information that we have there, and assuming that all turbines are doing that simultaneously. Now, in reality, so this is, sure. So this is the worst case scenario. In that, yeah, in that context. And you probably already yeah. answered this, but 40 decibels, what is that? Yeah. Well, we can look at it turned off. Yeah. 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 Beyond that. Well, for each five decibel, in, so these these are five decibel contours, and so for each five decibel increment, you're going to go out a little bit further distance. So from here to here was five. You can see that's a little bit larger, and we're you know that you know that would be another five, so that'd be 35, and then you know if you did another. One, and I'm assuming 30. this all took into consideration the topography, correct? We we did look at the topography. Because this is right here. Is this? There's a little bowl. There's a bowl right there. I'm right here. Okay. So I'm looking right up that bowl. Um, yep. So probably from what this is saying, you're looking at about 25 decibels. Yeah, somewhere in the 30, 30 plus or minus. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's about right. That's so con this that's is, that but constant. This is an average. No, no, that would be. Uh, so again. The turbines, Averaged. the turbines will operate uh, when the wind is blowing, right? So it's gonna it's gonna depend on the wind speed. So this is, this this sound level is predicted when they're operating at their maximum sound level, their maximum rated sound level. So under conditions that are less than, or the wind speeds are lower, mm -hmm. the sound levels are lower. One thing is, you know, you've got this this wall here. The, the hill across the way. And, and I can tell you when there's someone up here with a chainsaw, it sounds like it's coming off of this hill. Um, it's, you, it's, you can, you can, it just echoes right off of this wall here. Is that, um, is that something that was 
be taken into consideration. That's a good point. That is a good point because you, very good point. you can stand on Townsend Road and hear a conversation in a graphical pond, which is up in the mountain. Yeah. You can or hear God, it. God forbid somebody up here plays music. Right. Because <laughs> right. right right it comes right off the yeah. mountain. So did you take that into consideration? What we've got here is a mixed ground condition, so some ground reflections yeah. are taken into consideration. But, you know, we have to look at exactly... A lot of times when you have those situations, it's under calm wind conditions. Would that be fair? Or, or, or it's hard. I haven't made a study of it. I just yeah. can tell you. I, mean, I think a lot of times. A, a lot of the noise. So you told ground. me you're uh -huh. basing this on what the the uh, builders of the wind turbines have told you. It's but they're not based vendor, are, vendor specifications. So are they basing it on what the surrounding area might do to increase that sound or, or echo that sound? The way that that's dealt with is with a ground absorption factor or, you know, so, so they give you data that's kind of independent of conditions. Their, their independent of conditions. Their, their data that's been collected in a manner where it is independent of, of the conditions. But then you, so, you but add then, the we'll, then we'll add that back in. Like topographical conditions is a, is a very important area, as are, as are seasonal variations in the vegetation. So how can, how can one even propose a sound study without taking into consideration those variables? That's two different questions. So she I know. Asked, so she was asking about the vendor data. The vendor data is collected compared to the close to the curve. So, so they, Thank you. The, 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 the vendor information is collected relatively close to the turbine yeah, okay. on, on a reflective ground ball. And that kind yeah, of neutralizes the effect of the And then we've got okay. kind of that raw data, data. That's that we call sound power. We've got that data that will then import into the law. And then that model will take into account the topography, the location, the array, of the direction that there is. So this is not that model, then? No, that's that model. Uh, that takes into account the topography around This has topography in there. That's why we've got some jagged. Does it also take into account which direction the wind blows in? Because so, I know I live sure. no, you know, you do quite a bit Townsend of Road, and the wind blows toward the so, heading north of Townsend Road. So, so the, the modeling so perspective we that we use here is called a moderate down here. And so what we're presuming here is that we've kind of got moderate downwind conditions on this side and moderate downwind conditions on this side, all occurring at the same time. That's not necessarily a realistic scenario because the winds can blow that way. So, but what it does is it helps us explain uh, the contours. And so we're, what, we, what we have is, uh, you know, we're not taking credit for an upwind condition in any direction. So we are looking My at other the question is, is, is this an average or is this the loudest possible sound that could reach any of these points? Or is that an average, so there could be 75 at one point and 10 at another? No, we wouldn't We wouldn't see anything like that. What we look at is here is we're predicting what we get using the, the rated sound power of the level for the maximum wind speed conditions uh, under, under lower wind speed conditions we would see lower sound levels. I'm not sure you've answered my question. Is that an average? Or is that the loudest sound that could appear at that, any one of those points? I, won't, I don't want to say it's the loudest that can appear at any instant in time, but it's also really not it's not a, it's not appropriate to say that it's a long term average. What we're looking at is that this is the this is the sound level that we would predict under the, the rated maximum sound level of the turbine. And, and so, so and you predict that to be happening almost uniformly? The forty decibels? When it's running? This so this would so this forty decibel line you'd be predicting when, when forty a, decibels? Yeah, so when we've got a, a moderately strong or relatively strong wind. That's what we would be predicting. Under a lesser wind, we would be predicting something something lower. And have we done any studies on infrasound? Uh, studies in terms of... Infrasound on the lower sound? These are A-weighted contours, because that's how the criteria have been developed. And that's what... Uh, so it's not that, infrasound? That, that we have not done a study on infrasound. Do you plan on doing a study on infrasound? 
I think when you look at the literature on infrasound, uh, you know, we're not seeing that that it's being correlated. You know, we're not seeing any public health agency. But you're come not out doing any say, studies on it. Well, I guess you got a, a, a chicken and egg argument there, perhaps. But you know, there's. What, what kind of study would you like? I'd like to know what this infrasound is going to sound like in my house. So I, I, that is less than a mile and a half from your turbine. So I think when we look at the infrasound studies that have been done, they're all less than 85 dBG from the, you know, which is, dBG is, 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 is another weighting of an infrasound that, that folks have used. Uh, and so that's, you know, that I think it would be I'm not aware of any study done but anywhere that has really identified anything like that threshold. And what does that threshold mean? That, threshold? that threshold was a threshold that was um, that was kind of geared towards uh, an audibility threshold. What is infrasound not audible? Infrasound can be audible. It's louder. So it cannot be audible and still affect your body. Some people have that have that thing. I think it's another information. Well there's a lot of literature out there that says that I would I would hope that a company coming into this community with all these people would be concerned enough for our help and our concern that you would do this study for the final that you would do Because I can't see you like leaving it out. How can you leave it out? I mean, you're just talking about one one measure of sound. You're not talking about another measure of sound that other people have considered to be different. And it's not even like, it doesn't have to be that close. I mean, there's been a lot of studies. I've read a lot of things. I would like you to take that back to you. Take these back to that we would like to study. You want to take it? You got one? Okay. Take one of these?
the crop. You wouldn't would get that from here. It would, well, you have to read so there's a map right over 2013, 14, 15. That's, that's the sound that you don't actually you don't hear. hear. Uh, but if, and there's, there's research that can affect your distributor system. Well, we've done this sound. Find yourself on there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had a safety moment. can show you easier on this map over here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> well, I can see where the line is. So I live right here. That's where you are. What do you think? Is that, I don't think that's you. If we're either that or we're not showing you over there. Because we, we show north is on this map. Yeah, so we're showing homes down here. So I think I think that other home location might be closer to what, where that other gentleman was pointing to. This is Styles Brook here, right? Yeah. This is the actual. I think that's Styles Brook. Here. Wow. Photographs. Well, yeah, but they, they go the same. They, okay, but the road the road follows the Brook. But does it go all the way up so the to the mountain? Oh yeah. So I live, I live right here. Where, where the roads are I land for. Yeah. Right down there. I find well, you're saying you're so are we about mile. right on 10 miles? On the one mile? Yeah. I don't probably. Yeah. Half mile south of F5. Right. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure it over here. Okay. Anybody within a mile is gonna have problems. Yeah, but the, the thing is, that is gonna be 800 feet higher than my house, and there's gonna be a ridge between that windmill and. Let me find somebody can tell you about the house database. So, uh, you know, my question is, is the noise going to follow the hill down, or is it just going to keep going straight? I think it arcs down. I think it arcs down. Doesn't it? I think... Can't cut this shit. We, no, I'm serious. <laughs> Don't we, doesn't gravity... What if, gravity would have an effect on it. Doesn't I, it have some... You know, I can. I would Terrain and topography matter, and it all depends. No, that's, a, that's a great question about yeah. gravity. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. studies that were done 35 years ago um, and studies that have been done more recently. Well, 
I think you're, you're right about a number of studies. And I think if you look at the, the studies that we've seen more recently from, from Health Canada, from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection and Environmental Health, uh, they're, I'm, not, I'm not reading those to, to indicate that there's a substantial, a substantial issue. Show me, well, has there been done a prospective study that compares people who are not exposed to wind towers in close proximity to them to a population that has So, the, the, well, there were control groups that were done in the Health Canada study. So, so if you were talking about a, a control group study, I think you know you could look at some of the work that the Health Canada team the map is when I just done. And they just recently, I don't know, if, you know, they just published another five or six papers that are open access last anyway, week. So, so that's that's new available information. So they they did have some control groups. I don't think you can conclusively say that infrasound doesn't affect uh, human beings in an adverse fashion. So, would you buy a lot near uh, 1,500 feet from a wind turbine and build a house and raise your kids? I've spent the nights with people. No, no, that's but, you know, and, and other that's people. different. You, I, I don't think you would. They say the effects take almost a year sometimes because it's this residual that's on and on. Like you can deal with it for one night, but not but again, as a lifetime but we're, basis. But we're, not, we're not really, at least I'm not aware, but I'm not really seeing that we're, we're having a large. Number of folks become identified as, as having. Well, what about the lawsuit in Hard Scrabble well, with 60 people? How many people? people do you need to screw up to say you're not going to do a project? I guess is the real question. How many people? Well, you know, I, again, I, I think. Do we, you have to, to uh, and I'm taking it to an extreme, but how many people do you have to mur be murdered so you say, well, I'm concerned? I, I, think, so, I think what we do is we, we look at what some of the public health professionals are, are saying and we, we, re we review kind of their public health statements. But there's a public health person, I can't think of her name, but it's an Oriental, I want to say Hong or whatnot, who actually testified that this sound doesn't exist, there's no problem. Problem, but her emails reveal that, in fact, she advises an intern who's doing field research with her to take Tylenol because every time I get near them, I get this, migraines. This, this really affects me. And she resigned her job. So I, I think what you have is people testifying who are being paid to testify, much like an expert witness in a malpractice case. You can have some people say some pretty the wall stuff, and they carry an MD or PH to or what not to be paid. I think that's what you're seeing, and I think you're seeing them using research that is not being validated in a in a scientific fashion. It's more like it's like hearsay. So if you have somebody that's doing research uh, and starts recording incidents, well, I had a person die of this. I, this person had cancer. It's because we're close to the water. I mean, that's not valid. And you have to do controlled studies, and I don't think they've been done. And I think there's more and more compelling evidence that, in fact, infrasound can interact with the ear, the vestibular system, uh, inner ear, and create problems. So I, I think, so I think it, in my opinion, I think it sort of mandates that research be done. That's kind of before what... you put them close to populations. It's all right if they're out in, uh, in uh, the prairies of Alberta, They're driven yeah. by them out there. Right? Nobody's moving close to them. But when you have 
houses close. I mean, some of these houses are, are 1,500 feet from power. It's half a mile. But yeah, I think I think it I think it comes down to you know looking at what what the public health professionals are, are, are doing and saying. And yeah. That, thus far, what we've seen is Canada spent about $2 million and has just recently kind of finished or mostly finished a lot of their publications. Yep. And, you know, we've seen studies in Japan also kind of look at it. And, and I'm not seeing that the public health officials are interpreting their their studies to, to kind of point in that direction. So, you know, I, I don't, I can understand that, you know, and we'll probably will have more studies go over time. Right. Think ultimately, that's well, kind of how things happen, right? Yeah, but once you've installed a, a project like this, are you going to come and take the towers out if they're in fact affected? Well, that's not my call. So no, I, I think, yeah. you know, I, I think again we, we have to kind of look at the public health. Could you speak up a little? We can't hear you. It's a really bad format here. We can't hear anything. So could you speak up a little? You can yeah. yeah. you can accept the word, and we can. We're trying. Yeah, come on in. I don't, I don't have to be the only one talking. Yeah, yeah. we just we just some other people talk. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no so, problem. So, um, what do you? You know, I'm just curious. I read a lot online. I, uh, I go to the facts more so. You know, what's happening around the world. And in Australia, the second, obviously Australia is massive, we travel all over it for our business. In the second largest state of Victoria, they have now called a complete, complete stop to all wind turbine uh, projects. You know, because of the noise issues, because of the continuous health side effects. What do you say to that? I mean, we, I'm the one that I learned from what's already been done around the world. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I'm familiar with what you're saying. I mean, we do have the Australian Medical Association that came out with a policy. It just happened like a week ago. A complete ban on it until they finish more studies. That's that to me gets me concerned. I'm not sure. You know, so, are you saying that some people were advocating for a ban? Are you no, saying that the, the ban the was actually... the entire state of Victoria, the le second largest in all of Australia. We know how big Australia is, right? Yeah. I've traveled it myself. You no. Know, they just literally put a whole ban on any future wind projects until more studies are done because there's so many health side effect complaints that are pouring into them. I mean, I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to look at that because that's not my understanding of what was going on in it's Australia. in the news. It's well, okay. you know, I'll, I'll, all I'll, factually I'll happening. No, so no, no, I'm not. To me, I just, I just, I'm, I'm not familiar with I think that, we should so. learn from others' mistakes. You know, what's going on around the world. Let's learn from each other. And that doesn't... Well, and you the make, Australian Medical Association has put out a flyer if you want to take the copy of it. It talks about sure, their Sure, I'm open to anything. Yeah, you know, right. I've got to make a decision okay. here. Well, but, you make uh, this statement that multiple independent studies conducted around the world, including the U.S., have consistently found no evidence that properly sighted wind farms was any negative health effects. People are leaving their homes. I understand you feel passionate about it. I appreciate that. We cited on the back of this a couple of those studies, so Jeff, you have to read those. I will read those studies. Why would people leave their homes? Why would they pay their home? Their one, number one biggest asset. Unless there was a damn good reason. Yeah, so life it's just on. very surprising that you don't... I mean, the U.S. military has been studying infrared sounds since the 1960s. Okay. So, so we're trying to give you some right. resources We understand that. And we go to... And you know what? So it's just our internet is not on your side. Okay. Because we have to go there and get so much of this information that we couldn't 10 years ago when they barraged us in Wyndham to put them on Bleed Mountain. Okay? And... Thank you. I appreciate that. You know what? We have been sending out five, six newsletters with information, true cut information. We're not making this stuff up. And you just um, well, if you look at the back there, we've cited a couple of studies that are scientifically based, very large sample sizes that look at this issue, and we think that they show that there's not any evidence. And this is the lawyer you get to deal with when you 
they build them, and then you get the noise complaint, and then he shows up at the public well, service board. Someone, yeah. I, I just learned from what's being done. Yeah. You know, like, oh. See, and then they walk away. Because they can't
that's kind of a, a technology selection uh, that, that the company is, is working through. So those, those are kind of the typical aspects that, that we see come into play. One is, is, is siting related, the other is kind of technology selection. And here what we're evaluating is the, uh, the straight and trailing edge or the, or the, the low noise related option. So you're the, you're the uh, sound engineer. I know that that's in the past. So I, I'm an acoustical engineer, and so I'm the one that you know, works on development of the acoustical model. I'm not, I'm not doing the siting, engineering, or, or roads or anything like that. So based on this topography here, what is the So what we're doing is direct and redirect. So what we've got here is we're using a, uh, a model that's based on uh, downwind conditions kind of simultaneous in all directions. So we're kind of resuming a downwind condition in this direction as well as this direction simultaneously so that we're not taking credit for upwind condition. Uh, so when you're seeing this condition in this direction, you're probably going to see this copper shift in a little bit when the wind is blowing in that direction, but we're not, we're not taking credit for that. We're kind of assuming at this point uh, this kind of omnidirectional all downwind all the time, which physically doesn't occur, but it's, it's that, so that's, that's the consideration. So this is our 40 decibel contour line, this is 45, and then closer in we got 50, so we're showing 5 decibels. The 40 decibels is the demarcation line for the public service, uh, for the public health department to determine anything that's above. I believe that I believe the appropriate uh, the relevant criteria in Vermont is 45. Is that 45? That's 45. Yeah, that's the, 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 the Boulder red line is 45. Uh, that's all I have. Yeah, thank you. All right. Very take care. care. Yeah. Thank you. How far is this from the natural That's about half a mile. inside worked out sound study, is that correct? Because I've seen a lot of evidence contrary to that showing that sound study should be going out at least, you know, a half mile, mile and a half, even further. And some, some of the municipalities in Maine has taken it out as far as six miles. Six miles in Maine. So I just want to know, when you're talking about sound studies, are you also talking about the sound study inside a home, or are we just talking about the sound study from the property line? What we're doing here is we're doing a prediction of the exterior sound line kind of in accordance with the, the Vermont approach at 45, and so that's what we've highlighted. And then we show, even then we show kind of five decibels either side of that. We're showing 50 and then we're showing 40. We're trying to get a sense of how things work. First, to find out whether you find that the wind go down in one certain area of the Everything is in front of